Hello, welcome to Pop Nick's Music. I am, as always, your host, Papa Nick Lewis, and today we're 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 wrapping up the favorite musicians section of our ongoing top ten favorites series. <clears throat> today I'm talking about my favorite vocalists. Now, I've been dreading <laughs> doing this. Um, I mean. I can look at, you know, uh, guitarists. I, I've been playing the guitar for, you know, 30 or so years, even though you wouldn't know it to listen to me. Um, and so I've developed a level of understanding of the technique that goes into guitar playing, so I can kind of, you know, make some uh, uh, decisions there in terms of, of, of uh, technical quality and that kind of thing. Uh, I can look at musical instruments and it's 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 just it's easier it's easier for me to say okay I like that bass player better than that one with vocalists it's really really hard uh, probably because while I've been playing guitar for you know 30 40 years I've been singing all my life um, and it's harder for me to compare different kinds of singers than it is to compare different kinds of say guitar players and so I've been wrestling with how to do this. How do I differentiate? How do I evaluate? How do I say that singer A is better than singer B when they are fundamentally different kinds of singers? So what I finally decided to do was instead of having one top 10, I'm going to have, by God, three of them today. Um, <laughs> I've done top 10 uh, plus 10, but today is a top 10 times three. Ooh, should be fun. Uh, I hope it doesn't take me five hours to go through it. Um, the way I'm dividing this up is I'm going through all of my, all of the singers that I've got in, in my library, the ones that I really like, the ones that I'm drawn to, and I've got them in three piles. Uh, my first pile are the pop singers, uh, crooners. Uh, I like these singers because their voices are pleasing to my ear, and I am amazed by the, the technical accuracy of what they do. <clears throat> Excuse me. Pile number two are my rock singers, my yellers, my, my you know, fire you up, stand up there and just, you know, belt it out and, and, and make the people in the cheap seats stand up and clap their hands. I love a good rock singer. And then my third category, uh, so I got pop singers, I've got rock singers, and I've got, I'm not sure what to call these people. <laughs> I'm tempted to call them singer-songwriters, but that's not really... Accurate. I mean, a, a singer-songwriter is a performer who is primarily known for playing solo, um, uh, playing um, her or his own material, usually on an acoustic instrument. I'm thinking, you know, like coffee shops and stuff like that. And then that's not really what we're talking about. What I'm talking about are people who, who are primarily songwriters um, and whose voice really matches their material well. Um, so much so that I prefer listening to them sing their own stuff. I don't know that I would be interested in these singers singing other stuff. I, I don't want the I don't want to listen to a covers album by these artists. Uh, I want to listen to them performing their own stuff. And I want to listen to them performing their stuff. I don't want to listen to other people performing their stuff, right? So I like them as singers, but I like them as singers when they perform their own material. I don't know that that uh, affection is going to uh, extend beyond their own material. So I've got the pop singers, I've got the rock singers, and I've got the doing their own stuff, the writing singers. Um, and I'm going to go through all of my top tens here. I'm going to go through them together. So it's going to be 10, 10, 10, 999, 888, etc. Cool? Okay. Before we get into the actual top tens, uh, this is a top ten series, um, and Papa Nick's top ten series is unofficially sponsored by Schoferhofer Beer, because <clears throat> that's good beer, and something tells me I'm going to be drinking a lot of it this evening. <laughs> um, secondly, we got to talk about the criteria for being included in my top ten favorites. Um, it has to be my favorite. I have to like it. I have to feel attached to it in some way. And I have to own a copy of it. So I've got 30 titles stacked up here. Most of them are CDs. I've got a few uh, that I have on vinyl. And I'm going to 
I hope that I can make it all the way through this without knocking these precarious stacks over. It should be fun. And then finally, even though I'm clearly saying this is my favorites, I still have to do the subjectivity notice. We firmly, passionately believe here at Papa Nick's Music that there's no such thing as objectively good or objectively bad music. There's only music that I like and music that I do not. And as long as we keep that in mind, this is a wonderful conversation. It's informative, it's enlightening, it's entertaining. It only goes off the rails when somebody in the conversation insists on being seen as objectively right. So, I am not saying that my number ones are the objectively best singers. I don't think it's possible to say that somebody is objectively the best singer. Um, it's, it's too dependent on context. So, no. I'm not saying that, so <laughs> don't come at me with that stuff in the comments either. Cool? Cool. Okay. As we go through the top tens, I'm going to do my hard to categorize self, uh, uh, you know, uh, my version of the singer songwriter. I'm going to do those first, and then I'm going to do the rock singers, and then I'm going to do the pop singers, right? I tend to think the pop singers are the better singers. So that's, that's, that's the justification for the order. Coming in at number 10 on my I love him when he does his own stuff. I don't know that I want to listen to do uh, don't want to listen to him doing anyone else's stuff is Brian May. I love Brian May's voice. Um, I think he is an underrated singer. Um, and I almost picked uh, Night at the Opera to hold up as my example here because he's got two fantastic songs on that. 39 and Good Company are both, I mean, Brilliant, brilliant performances, I think. Uh, I mentioned in one of my Queen videos um, that I was upset that when Queen performed uh, 39 Live, Freddie Mercury sang it because uh, I think Brian should have sung that. But I went ahead and picked uh, his first solo album, uh, Back to the Light. Good album. Brian May, number 10. And now you see what I'm talking about. You know, nobody wants to, to get a copy of the Brian May Sings the you know, Gershwin Songbook <laughs> album, right? Yeah. My number 10 among the rock singers. Okay, you knew this was coming. If you've been paying attention at all, you know that I am a huge fan of the Knack. So yeah, I'm going to put Doug Figer in. Uh, I think Doug Figer as a, a rock band front man is just spot on fantastic. I love the way he sings. Um, toward the end of his uh, career as he aged, um, he developed a more prominent uh, stylistic tendency to slide into notes, almost like he's hitting a, a semitone below where he wants to go and then he'll slide up into the note. And that gets a little old. But in the early stages, he didn't do that as much. And oh man, he was a hell of a showman. I love Doug Figer, my number 10 rock singer. My number 10 pop singer, I love me some Yacht Rock, and of course that means I love me some Michael McDonald. There we go. That's a pretty good shot. Um, I considered holding up a Doobie Brothers album, uh, Minute by Minute. It's just a fantastic album. I decided to go with his first solo album. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff on here. Um, Minute by Minute is the one everybody knows. Um, or excuse me, I keep forgetting Every Time You're Near is the one everybody knows. Uh, I Can Let Go Now. Oh, such a sad song. I love Michael McDonald. My number 10 pop song, or my number 10 pop singer, Michael McDonald. Okay. Number nine among the singers that I like when they do their own stuff is from the Kinks, Ray Davis. I love Ray Davis's voice when he's singing his stuff. Uh, I don't want to listen to him sing anybody else's stuff, and I don't want to hear anybody else sing his stuff. I want to hear Ray sing his stuff. And I'm using my example here. I almost pulled one of his solo albums, um, Americana. I almost pulled that out. And I thought, no, I'm going to go ahead and stick with the Kinks. Um, and I love his vocal performance on Give the People What They Want, uh, especially Around the Dial is good. Um, Destroyer is interesting. Art Lover is good. There's a, he, he does some pretty good singing on this one. Um, almost considered um, Sleepwalker as well. Very good album vocally. So... Number nine, Ray Davis. My number nine rock singer, one of the few women I have on my lists here. I've, one of the things I'm discovering as I make these lists is that I really need to expand my horizons because these, these lists tend to be dominated by uh, old white guys. I, I need to go beyond that. 
And I need to include more people like Chrissy Hind. I love Chrissy Hind as a singer. This I knew I was going to be putting Chrissy Hind on one of these lists, if only for Brass in Pocket. Oh, yeah. I was looking at it on the list. There it is. I love Brass in Pocket. I mean, I love uh, Chrissy Hind's voice. Uh, the Pretenders are... I've got an interesting relationship with The Pretenders in that I like a lot of their hits. I've got several of their albums, and I've never been able to 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 feel excited about sitting and listening to you know a full album. Uh, but the 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 singles greatest hits compilation that they put out, man, I love that thing front to back. So I tend to like individual songs rather than full albums. But Chrissy Hind is a fantastic rock singer, number nine on my list. Number nine on my list of pop singers, got another woman here, and that's Cyndi Lauper. Cyndi Lauper is an amazing vocalist, and as tempting as it would be to uh, uh, hold up one of her 80s albums, I really like this. I know it's a bit cliched that as an artist gets older, they do a, a, an album of standards, you know, but man, this is good. The arrangements of these songs is fantastic, and Cindy's voice is stellar. If you have not listened to At Last, do yourself a favor, call it up on your streaming service of choice and give this thing a listen. Cindy Lauper kicks ass throughout this album. Love it. Okay. Before I get into my number eights, mm, that's good beer. My number eight <clears throat> when it comes to singing his own work is songwriter for the Alan Parsons Project, Eric Wolfson. Um, he's got a good, distinctive voice. Uh, he's mostly accurate, though that benefits from uh, Alan Parsons producing him uh, on some of the um, re-releases of the Alan Parsons albums. They include a lot of uh, bonus tracks, and among the bonus tracks are rough vocal takes, and his rough vocal takes are ooh, are they rough? <laughs> but when you polish it up, sounds really good. Uh, I'm using Ammonia Avenue as my example because he's got a couple of songs on here, Prime Time and Don't Answer Me, that are just fantastic vocal performances. Eric Wolfson, uh, the primary songwriter. Most of the songs are credited to Wolfson and Parsons, but Eric Wolfson is doing the heavy lifting of uh, in that songwriting partnership. So Eric Wolfson, my number eight singer-songwriter doing his own stuff thing, whatever we call that. My number eight among my rock singers, I make no apology for the fact that I am a huge fan of Kiss. <laughs> I love Paul Stanley's voice. Um, in my high school days, uh, he would have been up here at the top of, at the, the very top. I, I thought he was the best singer I'd ever heard. Uh, and he's still on my top 10. He's in at number eight among my rock singers. Uh, I've got as my example his solo album, which is a very good album. Strong songwriting on here uh, compared to um, the, the typical Kiss albums of the day. And I am definitely including Paul Stanley from the 70s on my list. I'm not including today's Paul Stanley. I still admire him. I still respect him as an artist, but boy, has he lost his fastball. If we're talking... Paul Stanley as rock singer. We're talking Paul Stanley in the good old days. So, number eight among my rock singers, Paul Stanley. There. Number eight among my pop singers, Daryl Hall. My God, that man can sing. <laughs> uh, I've seen Hall and Oates in concert one time, um, and it was a disappointing concert because. Daryl Hall spent way too much time bitching with the, the the stage crew about and the sound crew about the volume in his monitor. Uh, he just could not get that volume set the way he wanted it set. Um, and it's like, okay, I understand. If you're performing, you want to hear yourself. But at the same time, come on, dude, just play the song. Um, but man, I love Daryl Hall as a singer and I could have picked any I don't have a whole lot of, of uh, Hall and Oates albums uh, I don't have any of Daryl Hall's solo albums I've got a couple of compilations and then I've got some digital stuff but I do have a good old 
uh, hard copy of Voices, and man, is this a good album. Oh, Daryl Hall, Kiss on My List, You Make My Dreams, Are You Kidding Me? Yeah, Daryl Hall's on my list. Number eight among my pop singers. Okay, number seven among my singers doing their own stuff. Um, I like Ben Folds. I like Ben Folds a lot. I think he's a good singer. I understand that he's an acquired taste. Uh, he's got a, a thin vocal quality that I think a lot of people might be turned off by. I like it myself. I particularly enjoy his songwriting, so I love listening to him sing his own stuff. Uh, I don't know that I want to listen to an album of him doing other people's stuff. And I definitely don't want to listen to anybody else doing Ben Folds stuff. Ben Folds, number seven among my self-singers. Writer-singers whatever the hell we're going to call that. Maybe by the end of this, I'll have a name for it. Number seven among my rock singers. Going back to vinyl and going back to my high school days. Oh, you better believe Diamond Dave is making a, uh, an appearance on the list. David Lee Roth is, he's like a prototype, right? <laughs> it's like if you, were, if you were designing a rock singer from scratch, uh, you would come up with something that looks and acts like David Lee Roth. I love it. And this this debut album, Jamie's Crying, oh man, that alone is going to uh, is going to put him on the list. Um, you really got me as great Running with the Devil. Oh. But Jamie's Crying is good enough. Yeah. David Lee Roth, my number 7 rock singer. My number 7 pop singer. This is another singer that I greatly admire, but I don't have a whole lot in the way of of uh, copies of her work. Uh, but I do have my favorite album of hers, and that's Linda Ronstadt and Hasten Down the Wind. Um, I donk myself in the face with the, <laughs> with the album. I love Linda Ronstadt's voice. Oh, my God. Uh, she does at times confuse volume with emotion, but, man, she can belt it out, and I love listening to her stuff. Uh, I particularly love listening to her sing Warren Zevon and Carla Bonoff, which she does out the wazoo on this album, which is why this is my favorite Linda Ronstadt album. Uh, this has Hasten Down the Wind. It also has Someone to Lay Down Beside Me. And oh man, both of those are just, I'm, I've got goosebumps just thinking about them. Oh, Linda Ronstadt, my number seven pop singer. Okay, my number six when he's singing his own stuff, very similar to Ben Folds, is Joe Jackson. Um, a lot of what I said about Ben Folds, I could say about Joe Jackson. Uh, I like listening to him sing, but I understand that his voice is an acquired taste. It's kind of thin, uh, but I love listening to him sing his own stuff. I think his vocal performance on Body and Soul is among his better vocal performances, and I love the songwriting on this. Really like Body and Soul. Fantastic album. Uh, not here, not now. Just breaks my heart every time I hear it. Um, Be My Number Two is a just a, a beautiful song. Love Joe Jackson. Number six among my singing his own stuff singers. Number six on my uh, rock singer list. You knew I was going to drag Greg Kinn into this eventually. And hey, number six, that's where I drag him in. I love the Greg Kinn band. I love Greg Kinn as a front man. Uh, he's a good showman. He's, he, he works the crowd well. He's got the good raspy voice that you want a rock singer to have. And this is a very good album for Greg Kim's vocals. We've got Jeopardy, the hit that everybody knows. We've got Tear That City Down. We've got Talking to Myself. Oh, I love that one. Um, How Long. Oh, a lot of really good stuff on this. If you're not familiar with this album, it is worth tracking down. Greg Kim uh, from the Greg Kim Band, number six among my rock singers. Number six among my pop singers. There was a point uh, in the late 70s where, you know, I've, I've, I've made the joke before that uh, when I was talking about the Bee Gees, that it was like it was a federal law. Every house had to have a copy of, of uh, Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. Well, just about everybody had to have a copy of this thing, too. <laughs> I love Christopher Cross's voice. Um, his output has been uneven. His second album was decent. I'm hard-pressed to listen to too many of them afterwards, but his voice is beautiful. Uh, I saw him in concert probably, I don't know, six years ago, seven years ago. Voice still beautiful. Love Christopher Cross. Love this album. 
But I love Chris. I could listen to Christopher Cross sing the phone book. Oh, man. Ugh. Number, what are we on? Number six among my pop singers, Christopher Cross. Okay. Number five. Now, when I first started doing this project, first started working on it, first started trying to set up, I was able to zero in on my tens pretty, once I, once I decided this was the route I was going to take. Uh, but the more I was looking at them, the, I mean, I was just having a hard time trying to shuffle the deck in a way that was, that was accurate and made sense and I thought I could stand behind. And this next guy was one of my problems. I always knew he was going to be in my top ten among my doing his own thing uh, singer-songwriters uh, because he's one of my favorite recording artists. I love uh, uh, I love his music. I love listening to him sing. But boy, howdy, is his voice an acquired taste. And that is Randy Newman. And at different points as I've been setting this, this top ten up, uh, he's been at number one and he's been at number ten. I <laughs> mean... It's to, and I finally just, okay, I'm, boom, I'm, I'm putting him in the middle. Screw it. I'm, I'm tired of messing with it. Um, I think a good argument could be made that uh, he is my number one because he is one of my favorite. You know, if, if I've got, you know, if you can go see any artist you want to go see. Um, if he's going to be up toward the top of the list. I mean, I love Randy Newman. Um, I'm not even going to jokingly suggest that he's a good singer, though, because he's Randy Newman. I mean, come on. Um, but when he was the reason, Randy Newman is the reason why I've got this category. Um, I was debating what album to hold up of his, and I was going through my stacks, and I realized that I still have a copy of Nilsson Sings Newman, uh, the album that Harry Nilsson released around this time of uh, Randy Newman songs. Um, and I, I never listened to that thing. I don't want to listen to that thing. Harry Nilsson is a much better singer than Randy Newman. I think he's crap as a songwriter, but he's a much better singer than Randy, uh, than Randy Newman is. But I don't want to listen to a good singer singing these songs. I, these songs do not benefit from having somebody who has a higher level of technical proficiency. These songs have character, and Randy Newman's voice has character. So he is pretty much the poster child for this category, and I'm just sticking him in at number five because I got tired of fucking around with it. So <laughs> number five, Randy Newman. Number five among my rock singers. Got to have Freddie Mercury in your list. Um, Freddie Mercury is a, an amazing singer. He has, I mean, power out the wazoo. Interesting mental image there. Um, his vibrato... Uh, little too spastic for my tastes um but fantastic singer i mean fantastic fantastic range fant i mean just everything everything that he does is just fantastic so uh he's not my favorite member of the group but man i cannot even for a second deny uh how immensely talented he was as a uh, as a writer as a musician and as a vocalist um i've got um day at the races as my example for freddie mercury um, Night at the Opera would be the more traditional choice because, come on, Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, but I've got this one for, come on, somebody to love. Yeah. It's Freddie Mercury for crying out loud. Now, my number five among my pop singers made no uh, uh, even half-hearted attempt to hide my deep affection for Christine McVie. Oh my God, I could listen to her sing all day long. I love Christine McVie's voice. Um, I considered holding up um, the original Fleetwood Mac uh, album, the self-titled Fleetwood Mac album. Uh, I considered holding up Rumors, uh, considered even Tango in the Night, but I'm, you know, I'm going with her first solo album. I love Christine McVie. Uh, I am extremely pleased that I was able to see her in concert twice in the last 10 years or so. Uh, before she passed, 
um, both in a tour that she did with Fleetwood Mac and a tour that she did um, with Lindsey Buckingham. So, love Christine McVie. Oh, love Christine McVie. Okay. <clears throat> my number four among my singers doing their own stuff, Michael Nesmith. I love Mike Nesmith's voice. Um, I don't want to hear him do a whole lot in the way of covers. I want to hear him do his own stuff, although he does do covers in his own on in his recordings and they tend to be good but I'm more, I'm much more a fan of listening to him do his own work um, and I, I love this album uh, this is just Mike and Red Rhodes uh, on pedal steel guitar uh, Mike on vocals and acoustic guitar uh, and so there's no doubt who's doing what there's no doubt uh, I love it it's a great album if you've not listened to it and the hits just keep on coming Michael Nesmith um, the wonderful song, the, the ones I would pick, uh, his version of Different Drum is very good, Tomorrow and Me is good, The Upside of Goodbye. Good stuff. Number four on my list. Number four on my list of uh, rock singers from Blood, Sweat, and Tears, we've got David Clayton Thomas. Man. Talk about a powerful voice. We've got power for, <laughs> for the rest of these, right? Freddie Mercury was powerful. David Clayton Thomas is powerful. All of my rock singers from here on out are, oh my God, powerful. Um, David Clayton Thomas, I love him as a singer. Um, I love, and when I die, God bless the child, spinning wheel, come on. Virtually everything on this thing is golden. Um, I almost said sometime in winter, and he doesn't sing that one, so that that. That would have been an embarrassing mistake to make. Um, but I love David Clayton Thomas. He is my number four rock singer. Number four among my pop singers is a gentleman named Chris Rainbow. So far, I think Chris Rainbow is probably the uh, singer I've got listed here that the fewest of my viewers are going to be familiar with. Um, I came uh, to know Chris Rainbow. Came to know him? God, sounds almost like a religion. Uh, I was introduced to Chris Rainbow through the Alan Parsons Project. Um, Chris was one of the rotating singers um, from, I want to say he started with Turn of a Friendly Card. Doesn't really matter. Um, late 70s, early 80s. He started singing with uh, Alan Parsons. And he did lead vocals on several... Uh, songs on those albums but he also did vo uh, background vocals and he he does these wonderful lush like orchestral vocal backdrops it's stuff that Alan Parsons referred to him as the, a one man beach boys right because he's just he he's he does these wonderful layered harmonies and so i almost held up uh, turn of a friendly card there's a song on turn of a friendly card called nothing left to lose which was actually sung by Eric Wolfson, but Chris Rainbow is doing the background vocals that are just lovely. Uh, I almost held up Eye in the Sky because there's a song on Eye in the Sky called Gemini, which if you want to know why I love Chris Rainbow, that's the song you want to listen to. But I finally decided to go ahead and, and hold this up, mostly because I just recently got a copy of this. Uh, this is his album, uh, White Trails. Uh, and it has, if you want to look this up, it, it, you can stream it on most streaming services. Uh, the third song is called Song of the Earth. Oh my God. Chris Rainbow. It's just an amazing, amazing vocalist. Clear, accurate, and when he blends all of these different voices together, oh, it's just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. I love Chris Rainbow. Okay. Coming in at number three on my uh, singers doing their own stuff list um, is a, a, a guy who I think is highly underrated as a singer. I mean, I think technically he is a very good singer. And that is Jeff Lynn. Um, I could have held up any ELO album because he did all the singing on ELO. Uh, but I decided to go with Armchair Theater, his um, solo album from 90s somewhere. Oh, I'm not going to be able to see it without my glasses, and I don't want to get my glasses on. Uh, 93, 94, somewhere in that neighborhood. 
there's a, there's a note down here uh, uh, giving you the detail. Um, I love this album. Uh, I love Jeff Lynne's voice, uh, and it matches his material very well. Uh, this one, Every Little Thing is Good, um, Save Me Now is Good, Blown Away is Good, um, Lift Me Up, that was the one I was looking for. A lot of good music on here. Am Armchair Theater, very good album. Number three among my rock singers. My last bit of vinyl here. Um, I was talking about um, Linda Ronstadt earlier, that I don't have very many of her albums, even though I'm a huge fan. Uh, I got the same kind of thing here. Uh, I don't have many albums by this band, um, even though I think the singer for this band is one of the best rock singers um, of our generation of, of, of my living memory. And that is Ann Wilson with Heart. Um, Dreamboat Annie is the only album of theirs that I feel compelled to own of the ones that I've heard. But oh my God, can Ann Wilson sing. Jeez Louise. Oh my God. Um, Magic Man, Crazy on You. Oh my Lord. How Deep It Goes, I love that song. This is just a great album, and her voice is transcendent. And, again, powerful. Woof. Man, she, she, she blasts right through walls. I love it. Love Ann Wilson. My number three among my pop singers. So far, these have all been pop rock performers um, who've were recording in the 70s and 80s and that makes sense because you know that's when I was forming a lot of my musical taste but let's go back a bit let's let's talk about Johnny Mathis I love Johnny Mathis um, and I think he's a fantastic singer uh, the last concert I uh, went to before the pandemic shut everything down Johnny Mathis the first concert I went to after uh, everything eased back up Johnny Mathis I love Johnny Mathis um, I didn't realize how much of a bucket list item it was for me to hear him sing uh, Misty until uh, I was actually sitting there at the Majestic Theater in downtown San Antonio, Texas, and he started singing it, and man, I, I was projectile crying into the <laughs> two or three rows in front of me. It was just uh, deeply, deeply satisfying to hear him sing it. And I'm holding up uh, Heavenly as my sample album I've got. On CD and uh, vinyl, I've got probably, I don't know, 10, 12 of his albums, something like that. But I'm going to hold up this one because Misty, Stranger in Paradise, his version of Stranger in Paradise is fantastic. Moonlight Becomes You, oh man, oh, I love Johnny Mathis. Number three among my pop singers. Okay. We're getting to the top of the heap here. Number two, <clears throat> among my artists doing their own work, I did several videos about this artist and his different projects last year. So he is one of my favorite uh, writers. And that is Neil Innes. Um, and I've got this. This is a two-for compilation. Uh, but I'm specifically uh, holding up the first of the two albums. This is Taking Off, which you can just barely see the cover of. Um, not that there's anything wrong with Book of Records. Book of Records is a good album. Uh, but Taking Off is fantastic. Um, Taking Off has a uh, catchphrase. If you know me uh, as a, a personal friend here in the San Antonio area, you know that song. Um, it's got Crystal Balls, which is wonderful. It's got... Uh, I blanked out on the name of it. Three Piece Suite and La Vie en Rose. I love this album. Uh, but I could have, I could have picked, I could have picked Book of Records. I could have picked Off the Record. I could have picked Nearly Really. Uh, it's Neil Innes. I could have picked a Ruddles album. I could have picked one of the Bonzos. He's Neil Innes. He's one of my heroes. Of course, he's going to make my list. He's going to be number two on my list. Are you kidding me? Number two on my list. Yeah, you can see that stack growing here. No. And I'm surprised I haven't knocked it off yet. I mean, that's a precarious stack there. Number two on my list of rock singers. When we're talking about archetypal, powerful rock singers, for me, we are talking about C.F. Fred Turner from Bachman Turner Overdrive. 
oh my god do I love his voice it's got that 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 gravel that rasp that you want and it's got power man he's just oh and when you see him sing back in these days when he was still a big husky fella it's like okay yeah it, it makes sense um when uh, Randy Bachman and Fred Turner got together for uh, Bachman Turner, uh, which was um, 2005, 2008, that neighborhood somewhere, um, Fred had lost a lot of weight. Uh, and so he's an older gentleman and he's just kind of standing there and he just looks like a guy and then he opens up his mouth and it's just like, <laughs> it's like, man, he did not lose that fastball. Woof. Love Fred Turner. I love his voice. He is, I think he is an archetype rock singer. Uh, and I'm using Not Fragile as my example, Larson, because the, the title track, Not Fragile and Roll On Down the Highway. Mm. Love Fred Turner. My number two among my pop singers, um, and I'm sorry that I have to hold up a compilation. I've got one CD of this artist that's compilation. And I've got uh, a vinyl compilation, and I decided to just go ahead and go with the CD, and that is Sam Cooke. Oh, my God. Sam Cooke. Are you kidding me? They don't come better than Sam Cooke. He, well, there's one, I think, that's better than Sam Cooke. Um, I love Sam Cooke, uh, and I don't care uh, which of his many hits we're listening to. Uh, they're all fantastic. Wonderful World, fantastic. Uh, Cupid, fantastic. Uh, and I'm not even going to, you know, Summertime, his version of Summertime, fantastic, right? I just twist in the night away. Oh, fantastic. Um, everybody loves to cha-cha-cha, love it. Chain Gang, love it. Um, having a party, love it. Bring it on home to me, love it. You send me, come on. Sam Cooke, my number two pop singer. Love Sam Cooke. Okay, now we're up to the tops. My number ones, and I think I deserve credit for passing up a an obvious number one joke there. I do like juvenile piss humor. My number one singer when it comes to singing his own stuff, um, <clears throat> I've said a couple of times for, for singers in this category that I think he's an underrated singer, blah, blah, blah. And I think... Donald Fagan is an underrated singer. I think technically he's a very good singer. But he is synonymous with his songwriting for me. Um, he does the occasional cover. Uh, I almost held up Sunken Condos as my example for um, Donald Fagan because I think it's a fantastic album. I decided to go with uh, The Nightfly. Uh, it's a more traditional choice. It's a safer choice and it's got IGY and you know, it's got uh, The Night Fly. It's got, what's the other? Um, New Frontier. That was the one I was trying to remember. Um, and one of the things I was going to say about Sunken Condos is he does a cover of an Isaac Hayes on that, uh, an Isaac Hayes song on that that is, that is very good. Um, and that's, it's unusual when, when you hear. You, know, you normally think of Donald Fagan just singing his own stuff. But I love Donald. I love Steely Dan, and I love listening to Don. I love his solo material. I love listening to Donald Fagan sing. Oh, not my number one singing his own stuff singer, Donald Fagan. My number one rock singer. Um, not my favorite rock band. I mean, that's an awfully rude thing to start off with. It's just. I had a a, a, a a video not too long ago, uh, my one album, Wonders. Um, Dreamboat Annie was a one album wonder. But this next album is a one album wonder. Um, I liked the first album. Uh, I bought their second album hoping I would like it as much as the first, and I didn't. Um, I didn't even buy any of the few later albums that they did. Uh, I've listened to them, but I've never actually spent my money to buy a copy of them. Um, and that's Boston. Um, so I'm not a, a, like a huge fan of Boston, but Jesus Christ, is Brad Delp a fantastic singer? Oh my God, he's good. Um, it's, he's just, he's got power, he's got range, he's got emotion in his voice. Oh my God, 
Brad Delp, are you kidding me? Ah, oh, more than a feeling. Oh my lord. Um, hitch a ride. Something about you. Oh, peace of mind. Oh my god. This whole album is fantastic. It's a perfect album. And a large part of the reason why it's such a perfect album is Brad Delp's voice. Um, but my number one pop singer, uh, who is also pretty handily my favorite singer just across the board. It's one of the reasons why I put the pop singers last. I tend to like the pop singers better than the others, which I said when I started. Um, but hands down, my favorite singer just across the board of all time is Carl Wilson. Um, I could have held up any number, any of a number of uh, Beach Boys albums. Uh, he's got vocal moments in all of them. I could have held up... Um, I could have held up 2020. I can hear music. Oh, Lord, is that a beautiful song. I could have held up uh, Carl and the Passion So Tough. Um, all This Is That. Oh, man. I could have held up Holland, uh, The Traitor. Oh, are you kidding me? Uh, I could have even held up their 1985 self-titled album because I think uh, uh, Maybe I Don't Know is great. Uh, it's Getting Late is great. I mean... Every album has good Carl. Even the crap albums have good Carl moments. Um, I decided to go with his first solo album, um, which is a slightly better album, I think, than his second solo album, Youngblood, which I also have over there, on vinyl and on CD. You know. um, the, the hesitation I have with Carl has nothing to do with the, his voice. It has to do with the fact that he has shitty taste uh, when it comes to the lyricists he works with. Uh, if he were working with good lyricists, he would have been cranking out hit after hit after hit because the man could write music. He's a fantastic musician, fantastic composer, and unreal, unearthly as a singer. Oh my God. His range is fantastic. His tone is pure. I love Carl Wilson. My favorite overall singer. Nice stack. And those are my 10 favorite singers singing their own stuff, my 10 favorite rock singers, and my 10 favorite pop singers. Whew. Man, that took a while. <laughs> what are your favorites? Drop that comment down below. I always love hearing from you. Uh, are there obvious ones given this selection? Are there obvious ones you think I've missed? Let me know about them. Uh, do you, would you argue with the placement of these? Let me know about that. I, I do love hearing from you. As always, if you enjoyed the video, I appreciate it if you did. If you enjoy the video, go ahead and click the like button. If you do click the like button, click the subscribe button as well, if you have not subscribed already. Uh, and if you do subscribe, uh, then click the bell for notifications. It makes a difference to the YouTube folks, so I would appreciate it. Uh, thanks again for watching today, um, and I hope that the rest of your day is glorious. See you soon.